Hi there. Today we're going to take a break in our regular programming to talk about how the three feathers uh, came about. Um, because it was not the case that I thought for, you know, 20 years, like, oh, I really have to write down that rooster story. I have to get that out of my system uh, and finally write it down so I have peace again. Um, that was definitely not the case. I uh, didn't before Joshua necessarily liked roosters. Um, we have some chickens, but uh, we never had a rooster actually. Anyway, um, so how it all happened is uh, just a little story in and of itself. That's why I thought I'll, I'll tell it here. It all began with my colleague Diane uh, in my real estate office where I work. Um, she told me that she has a friend of hers who is having computer trouble. And she was asking me if I could um, try to repair it. I'm pretty good with computers, so I said, okay, fine. I'll, uh, she said, you can make a little money and you can set up her printer wirelessly with her computer and all that stuff. So I went to her house and um, we introduced ourselves and she showed me her office with her computer and everything. And I started to unpack the, com the printer. She hasn't even unpacked it yet. So I started to do that and she asks me, so what's your birth date? And I told her my birth date. She says I'm an astrologer and uh, we talked a little bit about that. And over the next, I want to say hour, maybe hour and a half, she um, told me everything that has to do with my sun rising in this constellation. I, I don't really have a lot of uh, knowledge about astrology, but she basically told me everything that's wrong with Gemini, uh, because I'm a Gemini. Um, I tried to kind of, in the meantime, set up her computer. It worked marginally well, um, because I tried to concentrate on what she said, but I, I did not retain any of it, except for two things. The first thing was, she said, you have to go back to therapy. Now, I was uh, going to a therapist for about four years between 2006 and uh, to, uh, 2005 and 2008 or something, uh, 2009. And I actually had thought about going back just to refresh it uh, for a little bit. Um, but I have not told, I didn't tell um, this person. So she said, you have to go back to therapy. The second thing what she said was the really interesting thing. She said, stop editing yourself. She said, for God's sake, stop editing yourself. And um, when I went home that night, the first thing I did was the next morning, actually, the next morning, I called my therapist. We made an appointment to go there. A um, couple of days later, I meet with her in her in her practice, and we usually do one of two things. Um, we either do table work, which means you lie flat on a table, and she kind of it's kind of visual journeys into your body. For example, she asks you, um, "So what's going on in your life?" and you tell her things that you have trouble with, and she tries to identify that within your body and then you kind of go into that area with your imagination. And from there, stuff happens that is actually really helpful. Um, the second thing we do sometimes is uh, the sandbox. And how the sandbox works is the following. She has a sandbox in her office that um, is basically filled with sand. And behind that, has, she has a huge shelf that is filled with all kinds of little figurines. For example, you can have a palm tree, you can have a train car, you can have wooden train tracks, you can have helicopters, little soldiers, all kinds of animals. There's Darth Vader, uh, Luke Skywalker. You, you have, I mean, probably about 300 different items. So what you do is, without thinking, uh, just sort of kind of let, let yourself uh, just slow down your mind a little bit and pick something out of the out of the shelf and place it into the sand. You know, you can arrange it however you want it. And once you're done, you tell her I'm finished and then you step back with her and you look at it. And most of the time, really interestingly enough, um, you can identify who you are in that scenario, who other persons are that you maybe have conflicts with or something. 
and it really helps and most of the time it stays with me for a couple of days after the session and I can think about it. This time was absolutely strange. I said to her, I have no clue what this means. I have no idea. Um, so we looked at what's in the sand and there was a rooster, there was a wolf, there was a war horse, there was a dragon and there were three feathers um, kind of pushed to the side, sort of into a cave like thing in the sand over there. And there was a little uh, frog on a skateboard. And there was a Pegasus, yes. So I told her, listen, I have no clue what this is. It might might make a little story, like a little fairy tale, one, you know, once upon a time, blah, blah, blah. But I had no clue what it means. And I left the practice kind of neutral. Uh, usually the, the session is more intense and it stays with me and it works inside me kind of. Uh, this time, absolutely nothing uh, happened. I forgot completely about it for two days. I was just working right away when I went out of a practice on the phone and stuff. And two days later in the morning, I remembered, oh yeah, there was this session. And I usually write down her sessions. Um, I think three years prior, she told me, why don't you write down the session? So you, you know, you have a kind of a record. And I, I did that each time. And it wasn't any different this time. So I started, I remember I was sitting at the uh, breakfast table with some coffee. And I said, all right, let's just write down the session. And I started with once upon a time, there was a rooster who lived on the eastern shore, somewhere between the tundra-like highlands to the south and the lush, low grasslands of the north. And then I thought, what would be his name? And then I realized that Joshua would be his first name. And I was thinking about his last name and then I thought, hmm, he longs for something. I know he longs for something. So let's call him Joshua A. Long. Um, okay, so his name is Joshua A. Long, I was writing. And I finished the chapter, the first chapter that morning. And I was thinking, wow, there is, I think, something there Obviously, I had no clue where it, where it was going. I just basically wrote the first chapter, his dream and his, uh, his wish to fly out of the coop and find the three feathers and kind of know more about himself because he didn't really know himself. And that was it. So I began to write, I think a couple of days later, I wrote chapter two chapter three, the departure, and I really didn't think about where it was going. And at that point, I really thought, all right, I don't know what else to write. This is, this is it, you know, this is how far it goes. And um, I wrote chapter three, when he departs, he goes through the woods onto the meadow. And then all of a sudden, chapter four, he meets Gray, the wolf, and when I kind of thought about Gray's past, that's when it got me. That's when I thought, wow, there is something there that I really should continue on. Um, I wrote chapter five, when they meet Creek, the warhorse, when they save him from certain death. And towards the end of that chapter, when all three of them are together and they basically make a pact to help Joshua on his quest and become friends. That's when I realized that all of a sudden I was included in that pact. And for, I really can't explain it any differently than I had nothing to do with the writing. I had to do with the writing, yes. But I had very little to do with what the characters were like, what their story was, where the story was going. Um, I was never more than one chapter, maybe sometimes two ahead of the story in my head. I just followed basically what, what came to me. It was literally like some uh, um, archeologist discovering a, a city or some artifact 
under the sand because I felt like I was just brushing the sand away, um, cleaning it out from dirt and making it visible, but it, it was fully there. There was not a moment where I thought, after that, after chapter five, there was not a moment where I thought, I'm gonna abandon the story. Um, I, I had doubts, I had a lot of doubts about my writing abilities and uh, would anybody even possibly read that? And um, But it never really occurred to me to stop. Um, Layla, uh, Amy's daughter, was a big help in that. She read uh, one or two chapters and she um, the one chapter re she read was the one where the vulture um, arises from the dead, the Joshua's counterpart. And she read it and she wrote with a little a little handwriting, uh, I think she was in fourth grade then, she wrote um, amazing and intriguing or something and intriguing. And that really uh, kept me, that really kept me going um, because I was very doubtful about if I could write, you know, English is not my first language and I thought uh, who who am I to write this thing? Okay. Um, anyway, so I went from chapter to chapter, and when they came to chapter six, I started to draw a map. And when I started to draw the map, what also followed was the painting of um, Hans Werner Sam. Hans Werner Sam is a German painter who paints surrealistic like uh, very interesting paintings that defy gravity or that defy natural laws. Um, and they were always completely um, or utterly fascinating to me. And they touched me in a deeper way than uh, just a regular painting. So um, I think four or five of the, of the um, locations in the book are actually uh, drawn from paintings uh, from Hans van Assam. The, there is a poem in there that I wrote three years earlier, um, The Stream of Stars, that Joshua discovers, Joshua and Gray. And there are some other things in it that I don't wanna get into now, but um, all in all, it took about four and a half months. And there was, as I said, very little, I basically just followed what I saw in the sandbox. You know, it was Joshua, then the wolf, then uh, Creek, uh, then the Pegasus, then, um, I don't know if the turtle was in there or not, um, then the frog without the skateboard and um, the dragon. So I basically followed what I had laid out in the sandbox. That was my, that was my, uh, lay my outline for the book. The last 20 pages were very intense. I cried profusely while I wrote the last 20 pages, I was kind of sick. I had a, I had a cold and I was kind of dizzy and in a haze. And I wrote, I, when I closed it, when I closed the book after it was done, I could not remember anything about the last chapter um, at all. I had to reread it a couple of times to realize, oh my God, this is what happened. Um, but I had really no clue. It just came out of me in a, in a very strange way. I think um, I was just crying the whole time about, I don't want to say about what, but anyway. So that's the story of how it came about. I have, um, I'm going to do another post on this little book that is called The Dawning of the True Self. I wrote that after uh, um, The Three Feathers was published because I also thought that the Joshua's journey is not only a, um, a just a story about animals and friendship and, and all that, but it's also a spiritual quest to find oneself. And I thought there is much more in there than I originally um, um, realized. For example, Hollow's Gate is the world that they, uh, Joshua and Gray and Creek and the Pegasus enter into. It's a subterranean, 5,000 feet deep world. And that is, I think, the unconscious mind. So if you're on a spiritual quest, 
you have to at some point conquer the unconscious mind. You have to dive down into your darkness and come out on the other side. And so I'm I'm writing about this in this other book that I will um, do a blog post about, a video post. But what I want to tell you is that in the the um, the last part of it is called the writing of the three feathers, and that is basically what I just told you. Um, each chapter is how I wrote what what kind of f flowed into the writing of the book, basically. Um, also, the there's one Kindle version of the Three Feathers that is on Amazon that is called the Three Feathers Special Edition, and the Special Edition is only available for the Kindle, and that has the um, that has also the the background in it, how it was written and and what how it came about and and all this stuff. Just in case you should be uh, interested in that. Um, all right, I think that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to always email me. Check out my Facebook page, um, check out the three feathers.com and um, enjoy. Thank you so much for listening.